my turn now to be a house care hero, Tanya, and this is something I've always wanted to be. Can you use a hammer and nail? Not, not yet, but I'm about to. <laughs> you know what? Can I'm, you use a screwdriver? I'm not the handiest guy around the house, but I do use a left-handed screwdriver. There and, you go. And Chris, that's very important, isn't it? <laughs> yes, and when, you, when you go to the hardware store, you want to make sure that you ask for a left-handed hardware uh, screwdriver because if you're right-handed yeah. and you use a left-handed, then instead of lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, <laughs> you're going to get righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. You, you don't want that. Yeah, we don't. Do we, Tanya? <laughs> In addition to being a household hero, you're fast becoming. You write a column. I do. And it's Ask at, well, my, my column is called About the House, oh, and my okay. website is askprickett.com. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you could, they can ask you anything they want? Pretty much, and occasionally I'll give them a correct answer, and if not, I'll figure <laughs> something out. Yeah. Chris, how did this all come about? Were you always handy around the house? You know, it, it, I, you I, yeah, I was. I am married. Uh oh, you have those to-do lists. I do, and actually, I'm one of those strange guys that like the to-do list. I mean, give me a, a whiteboard and a cart gun, and I'm uh, ready to go. Go, to go pretty much yeah. yeah so how did you get involved in all this well I've been a contractor for almost 30 years uh, I was a home inspector mm -hmm. and I'm now a realtor mm -hmm. and through those uh, different careers I've had I've kind of taken for granted oh. that everybody knows this stuff well mm -hmm. in seeing going yes. into people's houses I've seen that they don't something as simple as furnace filters and then the wife says hey go fix this and I said I'm not a handyman she exactly. says go fix this yeah and then we screw it up and right. then we got a high you twice as much. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you, you bring up a good point because it's really important to know your limitations. Mm. What I like to tell people is there's a lot of things that you can do, and even with myself, there are things that are left best to the professionals. Like the electric. Electric. That's a great example. Mm. Yes. Um, yeah, you can get a new hairdo if you're not careful. <laughs> <laughs> Plumbing should be left to the professionals too, but that's a little yeah. easier. I mean, you can't. A plunger we could. A you plunger. Sure, sure. Changing the aerators in your faucets mm -hmm. is, is a huge thing. People, they turn on the faucet and after a while yes. it doesn't come out and yeah. they're thinking, oh my goodness, I need a plumber. Well, all you have to do it's is unscrew that little yeah. guy, get the gook out, mm -hmm. and you're back on your so way. So some of them are fairly simple. So yeah. you, I see you have filters. I have furnace filters here. <laughs> How exciting. <laughs> How exciting are furnace filters? Well, you know, it's, it, it's funny. I... For kicks, I like to go to the furnace filter aisle of the big box stores okay. and just watch the comedy that goes on. People walk down, and if you've ever walked down there, there's 600 different types <laughs> yes, of filters. There is. With and all they're, different numbers oh, on Oh, yeah. And they're, yeah. well, not only sizes, but they're high performance. They're oh, yes. super micron. They're this, that, and the other thing. And you can literally watch the heads explode as you go down the aisle. And that's just the people that work at the <laughs> hardware store. So you can imagine going in. What's yeah. this one? Okay, this is the basic, your basic spun fiberglass filter. Okay. Okay? Imagine that your furnace filters are, you're going to love this, the nose hairs of your HVAC system. So they're going to collect all the gook that the furnace is, mm -hmm. is breathing mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. This is your basic. Mm -hmm. This is not going to collect the really small stuff. It's going to collect dust. Mm -hmm. Some systems, this is all that they can handle. A cheaper builder grade system, this is all that so they can handle. So you have to know your system. You have to know your system. And what I always suggest is if you don't have a service agreement with an HVAC company, at least hire a local guy to check out your system once, let you know what you have going on, mm -hmm. and give you the advice. Okay. So this is number one. Okay, number one. Going up a little higher, this is a washable electrostatic type filter. It looks almost like uh, steel wool in some in some fashion. I remember when I had yeah, the it's, it's very pad. similar to the kind of like the 3M pad, yeah. mm -hmm. and this and it's made from a similar material. And this is washable, so it's a little more expensive than this mm -hmm. guy. A little better as far as collecting the dust. Not going to get the allergens, but a little better at collecting the dust. Okay. And you don't have to buy them, you buy one, and it'll last you probably a year or so before you have to replace you it. You could use this outside at your door for a mm. wipe your mat. You could. Dermabrasion. <laughs> so yeah. multi, multi oh, There's all yeah. kinds of things. Oh, sure, sure. give you an exfoliant. <laughs> now, the next guy is a pleated filter. Huh? And again, you're going to go to the uh, hardware store, and you're going to find probably 25 different types. This is probably the cheapest brand, but the deal here is more surface, more dust collection. Okay, so this is going to collect more more stuff than this guy. Then this and then you can get into, with this, you can get different uh, types that will 
collect more mm -hmm. of the allergens. So you get into 0.5 microns and all this yeah. kind of terminology. Okay, the ones you change every month as opposed to the ones they say a lifetime, well, well or here, a year. Here, here's, what, the uh, here's the deal. Here's the dirty little secret, no pun intended. You really, especially in the summer, you really want to change these things about once a month. Uh -huh. Okay, because you're constantly cycling that in and out. And if you have problems with allergies, the summer. You're, you're well, the summer, the well, winter in the winter, dirt, now up here, now I'm down in Phoenix where we turn on our heat about every three years. Uh, well, yeah, and it's, it's whatever your peak season is. You okay. really want to let that, yeah. you, you want to change it and just check it. Just check it and make sure. But what I see, the most common thing I saw as a home inspector, I would go into people's houses. The first thing I would see is I would look at their registers, they'd be full of dust. I'd look at this, it looked like thing hadn't been changed since they moved there. And in many cases it hadn't. But what that does is that fouls the system and that causes you expensive issues down the road. Yeah, and, and I've always wondered. What is the danger about, yeah, what is the danger about not changing the filter on a regular You'll blow basis? up your house. Well, <laughs> you, won't, you won't blow up your house, but what you'll do is you'll foul your system. Uh, what it's going to do, again, the, the, the nose uh, scenario, you can't breathe. Oh, okay. Your system can't breathe. Your system's going to work harder. When dust gets by these that's full, it's going to get inside your evaporator, uh, your, your evaporator uh, coil, mm -hmm. which is going to foul that. You're going to get dust and grit in there. That's not going to work as efficiently. And you can get mold sports developing in there that you're spreading around the house. Let's stay right there because when we come back, for those of you, uh, of us, who can't learn by just being told, we're going to show you how to change it when we come back. Sounds great. <laughs> stay right there.